Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football, and it's officially game week as we are inside seven days before college football kicks off in 2022. And we are looking at my first lock of the week heading into 2022, and that is as the Illinois Fighting Illini host the Wyoming Cowboys. And I absolutely love Illinois to cover 10 in this spot. Illinois is a team that if you guys watched my spring preview on them, I'm very, very high on Illinois. And then you look, take a look at Wyoming, and they return absolutely no production on both sides of the ball. And it's really hard to see Wyoming really even be competitive in this game. So you take that into account. I really like Illinois in this spot. Before we get into why I like them, what I'm looking for in this game, just wanted to say thank you guys for all the support. You guys have shown the channel. We are getting into college football, and I have had a blast talking ball with you guys in the comment section. So more importantly, if you like the content, subscribe to the channel, and then let us know in the comment section who you have in this game, which players I need to look for, and now let's start talking some ball. Let's start with why I like Illinois so much, specifically in this game, and why I like him the whole season. I already have a future on them to win over four and a half games, and this Illinois team is just quite frankly underrated by the media and Las Vegas. So we're going to start with the quarterback position. That was probably the weakest spot on the offensive side of the football for Illinois. Between Brandon Peters, Arthur, Arthur Stikowski, that, that name always messes me up, they just really couldn't push the ball downfield. You bring in a guy like Tommy DeVito from Syracuse who – extremely talented quarterback out of high school. He's a four-star guy, goes to Syracuse and just wasn't really protected. He was running for his life a lot, did not have a lot of clean pockets to throw from. Illinois should be able to give him more protection, but even more importantly, if you watch the spring game and you've seen Tommy DeVito play, he's got a better arm than guys like Brandon Peters. He can deliver the ball from a lot of different angles, can throw a lot of different throws, and any throw that he's going to be asked to make, I think he can make, and he's also very good ex extending plays outside of the pocket, throwing on the run. So I like the quarterback, but at the end of the day, as an offensive coordinator, they're bringing in a new one in Barry Looney coming from UTSA. He worked with Brett Bielma at Arkansas coaching the tight end. So he's got a proven track record of being a very good offensive minded coach. UTSA obviously had a very, very explosive offense last year. And you're looking at Illinois and, and how can they cover 10 points? They're going to be a more explosive team this year. They're calling their offense a temp pro, so they're going to be playing tempo. It's a pro-style offense, but they're going to be playing a little faster. And so I'm optimistic that they're going to be able to put up a lot of points on Wyoming. And again, at the end of the day, you're the OC at Illinois. Don't overcomplicate your job. You have one of the best running backs, not only in the Big Ten, but in the country in Chase Brown. Nobody talks about this kid, but he is a complete running back who is great in space can run hard between the tackles, and makes people miss. Very explosive running back. You couple him with an absolute bruiser in Josh McCray, who's 6'1", 240 pounds, second-year kid. I really like their run game. And then you have a guy like Isaiah Williams, who that he needs to get at least 10 touches a game. Get creative. He came in as a top 100 recruit, played quarterback for Illinois early. They saw, hey, we, you're just the best athlete on the field. We got to get you as a wide receiver and get you as just an offensive playmaker. And that's how I want them to use a kid like Isaiah Williams. End arounds, screens. He could, he's a very good receiver. He can run routes and win downfield. But the moral of the story is if you get this guy the football in space, he's going to make plays. He's going to be the most athletic player on the field. And I think against the Wyoming defense that you look at who they lost, guys like Chad Mama, I don't know who's tackling him in space. I think Isaiah Williams is going to be able to be explosive. They have two very good running backs. And I love what they did with the offensive line. They lose some guys on the offensive line, but they go to the junior college ranks and bring in some absolute maulers. Guys like Zy Chrysler, Isaiah Adams, two guys who are absolutely massive road graders. I think the running backs will have space. And I think they're going to be able to make some noise on the offensive side of the ball. You take a look at the defense. They lose a lot of guys that you liked a lot of good production. But I think at the end of the day, this Illinois defense led by Ryan Walters, who is an absolutely awesome defensive coordinator, that defense is more predicated on scheme than it was just individual players. You look at a team like Georgia, that Georgia defense was dominant because they just had elite talent. Illinois didn't have elite talent. They didn't have it littered with draft picks, but they were a damn good defense because schematically it was a very effective defense. 
Now, I do like some players on the defense side of the ball. A guy like Tariq Barnes is very, very good. And a guy like Sidney Brown, Devin Witherspoon, guys in my notes that I really, really like. Sidney Brown, just a playmaker. Can play in the box, really physical guy in the run game. He's also very, very good in space and coverage. I think the defense will be able to hold their own against Wyoming. And you look at Wyoming. That's a team that just was so one-dimensional last year. You take a look at what they did and how they had their success. They pretty much only ran the ball. They averaged 162 yards through the air per game. That is 117th in the country. They just, quite frankly, didn't try to throw the ball. And they're losing both their quarterbacks. Sean Chambers, Levi Williams, both gone. They bring in a Utah State transfer and a junior college transfer. And the junior college transfer, from what I'm reading, Josh Allen lookalike. Josh Allen's a one in a million guy. At the end, I'm a Bills fan. And I wasn't even happy when they drafted him because you see a guy like that. Those guys only hit once in a blue moon. So I'm not saying, I'm not thinking this guy's going to be the next Josh Allen. And then you look at the rest of the guys. They ran the ball extremely well. They lose their leading rusher in Xavier Valade. Through the air, Isaiah Nair was their really only wide receiver who was a threat to call for 735 yards. He transfers to Texas. You're returning guys. You have a decent running back there in Titus Swen, but there's not really a guy that scares you through the air. And I just don't see how Wyoming puts up many points. So when it gets down to it, I think Illinois is the better team on both sides of the ball. And then it comes down to is Illinois going to score enough points to cover 10? Last year, I would not be laying money with Illinois to cover two scores just because they don't score enough. They get in a lot of those coin flip games where the game comes down to a last possession because they're not a very explosive offense. I think with a guy like Barry Looney coming in to coach the offense, you're going to see a more explosive Illinois offense. And there's guys who are legitimate playmakers on Illinois' football team, especially on the offense side of the ball, that I can see Illinois scoring 30 points. And quite frankly, I don't see Wyoming scoring over 15 points. And I think this is going to be a very easy cover. I'd also consider getting a, a first half line for Illinois because I don't think this game will be within a touchdown after the first half. And then you can kind of mitigate that risk of a garbage time touchdown ruining your 10-point cover. At the end of the day, Illinois is a better team on both sides of the ball, and they're a team that has really slept on in the Big Ten and in the national media. Really good running back. They have an explosive wide receiver. I'm optimistic that Tommy DeVito is going to be able to get back to form. Really, really do like Illinois to cover 10 in this spot. It's week one. Wyoming returns almost no production on both sides of the ball. And a team like Wyoming, they're not stacked with talent. They can't just cycle through talent that they lose like a team like Alabama or Georgia. They need time to develop guys. They're going to have a lot of new faces on both sides of the ball. I see Wyoming it's really, really struggling on offense with a new quarterback, new wide receivers, new running back. Really like Illinois in the spot, guys. Before we get out of here, again, just thank you guys for checking us out. If you do like the content, consider subscribing to the channel. This is my favorite game of the week. Strongly encourage you guys to take a look at it. We appreciate you checking us out, and we'll talk to you all later. Peace.